Okay, so this is actually an audio-only episode uh, because this Knicks game was a back-to-back. It was the first of a back-to-back, and I just didn't have time to set up the video equipment. Uh, so this is going to be a quicker episode, audio-only. Uh, it's it's going to be on YouTube, uh, but it's just going to be audio-only. It'll be on every other platform as well. Uh, once again, just no video for this episode. But we're talking... Knicks Pistons, which took place last night. So, without further ado, let's get into the episode here. We'll get to our intro and we'll we'll do this like we usually do. Um, episode five eighty six of BD four Knicks Pistons. Let's go. Welcome to the podcast. I'm your host R J Carbone. You are listening to BD four, where there's no better way to get your Yankees and Knicks analysis. We also do MMA. Yanks every series, Knicks every game, MMA on occasion. Let's get to it. Anthony for three. Bang! That one goes down and the game is tied. I'd like to take this chance to apologize to absolutely nobody. The Yankees are champions of baseball. Shaking and baking. Right here on the near fight. Welcome to the show, episode 486 of the podcast. I'm your host, RJ Carbone, and you are listening to BD4. Uh, One last time before we get into this episode, this episode will be audio only. It will still be on every platform that we usually uh, drop these episodes on, but it will be audio only. I just didn't have the time last night, this morning as I'm recording this, December 1st, Merry Christmas, to set up the uh, equipment and everything and, you know, get everything ready for the video format of the podcast. So we just went audio only because that might happen more with back with the first of back-to-backs because, you know, the episodes have shorter shelf life in those first games. So for this episode, doing only audio, but we're still talking Knicks Pistons, and it will probably be a shorter episode. But the Knicks... <laughs> I mean, they won. They definitely won 118 to 112 last night at Madison Square Garden. I mean, if there was a team that played any worse, like if the Pistons played any worse than they did in the first half of last night's game, I... I honestly think Silver would do something about it and like they wouldn't be an organization in the National Basketball Association anymore because that team is probably the most putrid scene, a team I've ever seen play basketball. And that says a lot because I'm a 28-year-old Knicks fan, so I've been around for some absolutely dreadful teams. I was around for both 17 win seasons, you know, the mellow years where it got rough. You know, the Langston Galloway, Lance Thomas, Marcus Camby, Kurt Thomas, uh, Ron Baker, Jose Calderon, um, you know, Samuel D'Alembert, those years. I was around for those. And unless my memory's not doing me any favors right now, this Pistons team, they seem worse than that. They are so terrible. I don't know how the Knicks walked away from last night's game pissed off that they didn't win by 45 points. Um, Nonetheless, almost lose it. Uh, Because Detroit was literally trying to give the game away last night at Madison Square Garden early on. I mean, they put no pressure on the Knicks. They were just... Like, the Knicks refused to move the ball despite no pressure from Detroit's 
half court defense. On the other hand, uh, and the Pistons were, I mean, they were handing the Knicks the ball on a platter with the amount of terrible, silly turnovers they had. A lot of them come from up top, just stupid passes where they miscommunicate Kevin Knox, uh, throwing to nobody. And like, <laughs> it, it, it got so bad, I thought I was going to have to turn it off, not because the Knicks weren't doing their jobs, but because it was a tough thing to watch as an NBA fan. Like, I, I was getting secondhand embarrassment for the Detroit Pistons. You can't give a bad team confidence or a taste, you know, because they will run with it. And that's exactly what the terrible, feckless Pistons did last night, um, at least for a little bit. Like, the Knicks had to play Brunson and Randall damn near 40 minutes each in last night's game. And let me remind you, the Pistons are a two-win team. We're sitting here on December 1st. They're a two-win team that just lost 16 games in a row now. So it's been over a month. Um, you know, in the first quarter, the Knicks come out the game strong. Um, not really. Brunson's really just, And Brunson was the only one. Let's just be blunt here. Um, his jumper was... Strong from the get-go. He was going strong. He was the only Nick with the knack, as Clyde would say. Um, because outside of him, the Knicks were not passing, and they were playing no defense. Uh, Detroit takes a brief lead midway through the first quarter due to poor Knicks defense. Um, the Knicks kind of get hot at the end there. They go on a 9-0 run late in the first. Brunson gets some help finally from Randall, and they're up 31-17 after one. Second quarter comes... Um, Detroit pulls within three. They go on this 13 run, 13 0 run at the top of the period, but the Knicks erase it with good transition play, good defense. They go up 16 points. Great defense by Mitch starts a fast break where he hits Dante for three. Brunson takes another charge. He knocks down a couple threes, had a four point play, 23 points at halftime towards the end of the second quarter though, before we get to halftime, the Knicks lose their shit again. Just garbage three-point defense. Uh, Detroit ties the game with the Cunningham three in the final seconds. Randall on the other end travels to ice the cake of the first half, and it's it's a tie game, 54-54 at halftime. Third quarter, you, you got Brunson still kind of the only Nick with the knack at the moment, red hot out of the gate, especially from three, but the Knicks not. The Knicks are, are just continuing to give too much room defensively. Detroit takes the first lead of the night since early first quarter off of an open three-pointer. Um, and the Knicks just continuing to play like New York City sewer trash. Um, it's eighty-five to uh, 87 to 85 Detroit after three quarters. Um, and then the fourth quarter comes, and, you know, after a tough opening few minutes, the Knicks finally tighten up their defense, and they get some big baskets by their Nova lineup to put the Knicks up, right? Dante had a couple of big-time three-pointers. He had a nice fourth quarter. Josh Hart was on the attack. Um, Brunson getting to the free throw line a little bit. And the Knicks uh, finally started to grab a little bit of those 50-50 balls late. Uh, and then Randall kind of ices the cake, secures the win with a few baskets late. And the Knicks win 118-112. Um, so a win is a win, right? Um, but the defense last night, it's funny because every time I feel like we do this, we'll, we'll like praise something specific in, in a previous episode. And then the very next episode, we'll end up having to um, criticize it. Like that happened with uh, the half court offense. We, we were praising them one episode, the very next show against the Timberwolves. They got shut down. Um, well, we praised the defense in episode 585. But here in episode 586... Um, I want to talk about how horrendous they were just for a couple of minutes. Um, it, ju it was the effort, man. The second effort was just not there. Um, there was some miscommunication, sure, but I think it was effort. Um, they weren't grabbing any 50-50 balls. Everything landed in Detroit's hands. Um, and, like, there was no... There was poor defense from literally everybody. You know, I mean, it was, it goes back to the opening play where Julius sets, and Julius, Julius had a good game. He had a good game. Uh, I'll give him credit there, but he sets the tone of this game by, you know, basically going here, hey, Cade, you, 
shoot this layup. I'll let you do it. And just provides no contest. And the next play, Cade's wide open for three. Brunson doesn't bother to Everybody was terrible. Everybody was terrible. Brunson wasn't closing out. That, that His defense in the middle portion of this game was really bad. Like, he played poor defense on Sasser. It, it was terrible. His defense on Killian Hayes, who... And Brunson was great. We're going to touch on him in a second. But Killian Hayes dropped 23 points on 10 of 13 shooting. That's mind-numbing. Um, Brunson's just running him off the three-point line, where he's not great. And he's allowing him into the mid-range where he killed the Knicks all night. So it's just like stupid, unintelligent defense where you, you got to know the scouting reports, know your personnel, and it's like you, you close out on him, right? Force him to rise up on the three-point line. Hayes is not a good three-point shooter at all. Um, and he's having a career year from three, and he's only like 30 31%. So that says it all. R.J. Barrett. Looked absolutely lost defensively, giving way too much room. Um, there was a possession on the ball where he's in the short mid-range guarding somebody, I forget who, and he just gives him way too much space. There was another play right after that where he just leaves way too much room in the corner for an open three, and that happened throughout the night. Um, his defense is coming back down to earth along with the rest of his game. Josh Hart wasn't closing out quickly. wasn't playing great defense. Our bigs weren't exactly great defensively. Mitch wasn't the same last night. Uh, Hartenstein had a tough time recovering off his hedges. So that's the negative. I, I just wanted to get that out of the way. Um, but there was positive, right? Um, and we're going to hand out game balls. So let's let's do that now. Um Jalen Brunson, I'll go to him first. Amongst the starters, he was the best one. Uh, he was the best one on the floor, period, last night. 42 points, he gets the game ball. Six boards, eight assists, one turnover. 13 to 24 field goals, 7 to 12 on his threes, 9 to 10 on the foul line. Yeah, I mean, this <laughs> he scores 12 points against Charlotte, and that didn't last. Drops 42 the next time out there. You know, and he wasn't bad in the Charlotte game either. He was just passing and, you know, going to the hot hand. And even last night, he was passing too. You know, late in the game, he wasn't as hot in the fourth quarter. So he deferred to Julius, who got the Knicks' big baskets late. And that was all with Detroit switching. They were, they were switching the mismatch onto Brunson and pick and roll. But he was smart. He, he knew he didn't have the hot hand, so he deferred. Um, he had a nice couple of... Uh, couple nice touch passes in last night's game that was nice to see um and he he continues to find that balance between scoring and playmaking because that was an issue early on in the year with him but over his last eight games he's averaging 6.8 assists versus 1.6 turnovers so that's incredibly efficient everything about Jalen Brunson screams efficient efficiency no matter where you look you look at the defense you look at the playmaking. You look at the scoring. He's efficient. I mean, that's that's another thing. Like, I'm not even mentioning his shooting yet. His shooting, he was 7-12 seven, seven from 3 last night, and that's nothing new this year. It, it's been incredible. It's been absolutely incredible, the three-point shooting development from Jalen Brunson. Um, coming from Dallas, where this he was a kid who rarely ever attempted the pull-up jump shot. Rarely did. And now he goes to New York, and he adds that to his bag. And not only is it his go-to, but he's one of the NBA's elite, like I'm talking top 10, dare I say top five three-point pull-up shooters. He's been unbelievable from three this year. And if you don't believe me, check the numbers of how efficient he's been from three the last two years now, since he's been a Nick. And look at the difference in volume with the slight increase in efficiency. And again, we talked about this a little bit last show. Because of this new development from him, it's allowing Tibbs to be more creative when the Knicks are in the half court and expand the floor. This stretches out the court for the Knicks. Um, And you saw last night again, the Knicks are continuing to go to that high horn set. That's like the third night in a row where I'm noticing it. Um, 
where they go to that horns action up top. And because it's up high, it allows Brunson to pull up right into those three-point shots that he loves going to off the pick and roll, off those mid screens. That's something he's been doing a lot this year. Right off the screen, pulls up. Um, but if the, if the defense decides they want to play up at the level on high horns, then he'll just blow right by them into space. He also has the option to hit the roller in space, whether it be Mitch or Randall, right? Because those are the two screeners are usually seeing Tibbs run those horns actions with. Um, and if Brunson decides to go Randall's way and he gets a switch, then he hits Randall. Randall can post the mismatch in a smaller set. You know, there's just a lot of options to go out of that high horns action. And it's all because, once again, Brunson's knocking down his pull-up three-pointers from long range this year. So... And if we're talking about new wrinkles and such, like we're seeing a lot more of Brunson off the ball this year too, right? He's been more active when he doesn't have the ball. He's relocating to different spots on the floor when Randall posts or Randall drives or, you know, Randall will draw two with his gravity and post up. Brunson relocates in the corner. Brunson's defender is now off him because he's paying attention to Randall. And then Randall hits Brunson now wide open with a defender late closing out. So... He's he's been incredible. Um, you know, a few I don't know a week or so ago when we did our progress reports, I gave Brunson a B plus because he wasn't a hundred percent there yet. Um, I, I think we all know if we were to do another progress report early, like uh, we know where we're where, where we're going with him. You know, um, he's been great. And then off the bench, uh, I thought Dante Divincenzo maybe not long off the bench, uh, played very well. 12 points, 4 for 8 from 3. Um, he had a, a bad first half. Uh, he came alive late. A uh, big-time fourth quarter to help the Knicks finally pull away. His three-point shooting was in rhythm. He was working great with Brunson and catch and shoot. Brunson loves hitting him weak side. Um, Randall plays well with him. And, you know, on a night where the Knicks played terrible defense, Dante was... Glue. I mean, he was glue late in the game on Kate Cunningham. Uh, if you go go back and watch the tape in the final half of the fourth quarter, the way Dante defended Kate Cunningham, that was the reason the Knicks won this game. Uh, another reason the Knicks won this game. You know, just constantly forcing bad decisions, pressuring the shit out of the ball, providing great ball denial. Um, but yeah, it, it's a good game. And now you know, you're noticing that Dante's best games of the season this year have come against, you know, lesser teams. Um, let's just put it that way. But regardless of that, it's still it's still not looking good with Grimes right now. Grimes is struggling versus everybody. Everybody. He had zero points last night against the Pistons. And so every time Dante has a big game, the conversation keeps coming up. Um, I, I think I'm ready for a change, man. We are kind of getting close to that time of year where Tom Thibodeau makes his one rotation change, right? Last year, it was kind of like mid-December. He made the move, for, uh, you know, to, to take out Fournier and Rose from the rotation. But I think because the Knicks are winning to a degree right now, you're not going to see it yet. But I think the second you see the Knicks you know, lose a few games in this month, and if Grimes is still not in rhythm by then, you're probably going to see the move. Um, and I also have to say real quick, I'm not opposed as much as I was, at least, to putting quickly in there, the two. I know we worry about the uh, balance of the units, but <sighs> it's intriguing. Um, but like Grimes is just playing with zero confidence, none. And he just looks lost and he looks unsure out there. He's a head case at the moment. I mean, he took, we talked about it the other night. He took a mid range. How often do we see him take those? He's just making poor decisions on his drives lately. Last night he tried throwing down a dunk and it was borderline Dante on Brook Lopez bad. <laughs> it was, it was almost that bad. Um, I think he's obviously pressing because he's knows he knows that he's not getting many touches. Ugh. 
he knows he's not getting many touches as it is. Right, and and so when the opportunities come that he has the ball, now he's just jittery. He's maybe trying to do too much. So I say at the very least get Dante in there, because at least with him he's always making an impact somewhere. You know, Grimes' defense, it, that's his calling card. Right, one thing he'll always have is his point of attack defense. But even this season, it doesn't feel like that's been great. I feel like Grimes' defense has taken a step back. He's getting bullied by bigger, I, I wouldn't even say bigger, just like normal-sized wings. Because he's traditionally a two. But he guards the toughest wing assignment every night. And he's having problems with it. And the rest of his game's not there. I mean, he's not really bringing much to the table this year. The three-point shot's not been consistent. He's not rebounding. He only averages one rebound per game. He only averages one assist per game. I don't remember the last time he took a free throw, or if he even has a free throw attempt this year. I'm not kidding. Um, he's not scoring at the basket. He doesn't really have a bag. Like He's got no ball handling or playmaking skills, really. And that's odd to me, because you'd think as a former point guard, Grimes, he'd show a little bit, and he did at times last year. He had some moments where he looked pretty good. Um running on the ball, running some pick and roll. like, But none of that is there. It's just, it's not happening with him. And I, I think, you know, we, we complain a lot about Tibbs not really running actions for Quentin Grimes. I get that. I think maybe playing him away from quick, uh, from not quickly, from um, Bronson, from Randall, from RJ, playing him with the second unit, maybe this will help Quentin find rhythm. Maybe this will help him get those touches and you can, run him in in some more actions, playing with a different group of guys. And on the flip side, we've seen Dante actually play better with the starting unit than he does with the bench. He's got good chemistry with Brunson. He's got great chemistry with Randall. And, you know, there are some questions, right? Can, Can the second unit taking Dante off that? Will they be running as much? I, I, I'm taking that risk, man. You know, and again, Grimes is never going to be the guy Knicks fans, including, you know, I was kind of buying in a little bit, thought he would be right before the season, right? Where, you know, he comes off the, uh, you know, he was in the gym with JJ Redick. We were talking about, oh, this guy's going to break out. I think I even said, I think he should be a priority over RJ. Um, but I never thought he was like a star. And I think Knicks fans need to start realizing Grimes is not a star player. And he doesn't have that in him. Um, At this point, getting him back to being what he was last season now seems to just be the new goal. You know? That's probably his ceiling here. He's a role player. He was going to have moments. But doing what he's been doing or lack of not doing right now, that can't happen. We need production. And he's not giving you production. You can't be putting up zero points once a week. Um, and I'm not like Tibbs is doing what he can. You know, I, 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 I actually liked what we were doing last night. I love how he's going to different sets, right? Talked about these horns actions. We're saying, I liked the rotations last night. He recognized, you know, he recognized who had it, who didn't Went Dante over Grimes realized that quickly wasn't on either. So he went more heavy on the Nova lineup, which helped the Nick the Knicks take leads in this game. Uh, I just, you know, I hope he doesn't rely on that too much because it's, it's a lineup that it's, it's nice insurance to go to when your top guns don't have it quickly. RJ, you know, RJ was bad last night, just 24 minutes quickly was bad last night, just 19 minutes. So yeah, I thought the rotations were fine. You want those two closing more times than not, but on nights like this, they don't have it. Find the Pistons, you can afford to experiment a little more. Fine by me. So that's it. In conclusion, the Knicks are now the uh, number five seed at eleven and seven. So they're they're on pace for fifty wins. It's a little tricky to use pace though because it's it goes by win percentage and you know a win percentage through a sample of eighteen games is a little different than a win percentage through eighty two. You know, but. 
they're they're, they're winning. Um, Toronto is up next. The Toronto Raptors will be hosting this game tonight. Um, usually I say this is a bad team. You have to beat them, and I still do. But, like, they, they always play the Knicks tough. They do. Um, and it's a tough matchup size-wise. That's a tough starting five to defend. Schroeder, Barnes, Siakam, OG, and um, that Austrian kid, the center. Jacob something. So, you know, that's tough. Who you guarding? Who's guarding who? There are going to be mismatches in this game. You know? You figure you're going to hide Brunson on Schroeder. You're going to put RJ on Barnes? Barnes got size, man. And you got Siakam and OG. Two longer forwards. I... Yeah. Yeah. I guess you got... Yeah, so there's going to be a mismatch, man. There's going to be a mismatch. Grimes goes on OG, maybe. Randall on Siakam. Mitch on... I don't know. Maybe hide Randall on their, on that Austrian kid they have because he's the least potent offensively. And you put Mitch on Siakam and Randall on... Jesus Christ. It's going to be tough. <laughs> It's going to be some mismatches. Uh, But I I still think the Knicks need to win this game. Because if they lose tonight, well, now you're potentially looking at the opportunity of, or or the danger of being 11-10 and by the end of next week. Because after Toronto tonight, it's the two tournament games that we got coming up. It's Milwaukee. And then... Regardless of the if the Knicks win or lose the Milwaukee quarterfinal game, they either have to play Boston or Indiana later next week. So, you know, two of those three teams for your next two games after this Toronto one. So it's it's Indiana's kind of coming back down to earth. They have a terrible defense. I I thought they were getting way too much hype. I know Halle Burton's having a good year. He had another good night last night, but they gave up 140-something to the Bulls. I think it was the Bulls. The Bulls or the Heat. Um, so, yeah, this is an important game for me because the Knicks aren't really taking care of tough competition this year. And they've got, you know, the number one and two potentially in the East coming up next week. I do expect Boston to win. They're going to play. they got a tough schedule ahead, so. A game against Toronto needs to be a win. And with that said, we'll head to our trivia question. Um, Not going to play the uh, sound mic because I don't have it here. But our question of the day for this episode, episode 586, is... Before Randall on Tuesday, who was the last Nick to put up 20 points and 20 rebounds in a single game? All right. So that's our trivia. Before Randall on Tuesday, who was the last Nick to put up 20 points and 20 rebounds in a single game? Obviously, I mean, at least 20 and 20. At least. So that's it for their trivia. And, um... We'll wrap this up with our parlay. Let's get to RJ's parlay to wrap this thing up. Let's see if I can pull up the uh, screen. Welcome to RJ's Parlay, where my degenerate self breaks down last night's big parlay. If I miss, it's not surprising. If I hit, I'll probably lose it all the next bet, because that's how this works. Welcome to RJ's Parlay. And as you can see on the screen, if you're watching, I have it up on the screen now. But last night's ticket didn't go well. (laughs) Um, A 
three pick parlay, same game parlay on the Nick game, plus 156 odds. I had Brunson 25 points or more. I'm sorry, uh, Brunson 25 plus points, rebounds, or assists. That hit. I had RJ Barrett 15 plus points. That should say points, not points, rebounds, assists. Um, he had that, that hit. And then I had quickly 22 plus points, rebounds, assists. That was the one that did not hit. We lost that one. So, another night, another loss on the betting apps for me last night. So, that was great. Anyway, with that said, I think we'll wrap it up here, right? I think we've got to everything. Um, yeah, just a shorter episode, only about a half hour of this one. But audio only. Um, you'll, you'll probably see more of this on the first night of back-to-backs just because it's hard to take notes, set everything up for me when I got a lot of going, I got a lot of things going on. I got articles to write for work and I have, uh, I'm still doing some school shit. So that's it. We will be back to normal. Um, after tonight's Toronto game, we'll have the video episode up and everything on YouTube and the normal podcast set up will make its return. So let's hope we can beat the Raptors. All right. Thank you. I'll see you guys in the next show. This episode was brought to you by Anchor. Hey there. If you stayed the entire way through, we thank you immensely for it. We hope you enjoyed this podcast and that you come back for the next episode real soon. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, download these episodes, and share them with your friends as well. BD4 is a five-star podcast simply because of you. And we'd like to keep it that way. Have a wonderful day. Go Yankees and go Knicks.